All right, welcome to our next example from chapter seven. This is the only example that we will see a separate video for that contains two objects. But the really important thing is that when we have two objects, we just have to answer all of those yes and no questions about each one of them. That's the only trick, that's it. So in this situation, we have a before picture, a complete before picture on the left here, and a complete after picture on the right here. And so we're going to ask all of these yes and no questions about both objects separately. So we have the before questions, and we have the after questions, and it's the same process. The only difference is that we're going to have two times that we ask this question. All right, so in the before situation, we are asking if we um, have anything moving at the start of the problem. In the lead up to this, um, in the slides, we talk about how the start of the situation, everything is being held in place and not moving. So the 10 kilogram mass is not moving, the four kilogram mass is not moving. In the after situation, the speed is the same for both masses. They are both moving. And so we absolutely have a yes for the 10 kilogram mass and a yes for the four kilogram mass. This idea that objects tied together have to move in the same way has been with us for a several chapters now, and that is still true here, even if we're only asking about the speed of one of them. All right, potential energy from gravity. What we are asking here is, is the object higher in the before situation? The 10 kilogram block is higher up than it is later in the problem. So 10 times G times H is a yes, but the four kilogram block is lower, so that's a zero. In the after situation, the 10 kilogram block is at the bottom, so that's a zero, it's not higher, but the four kilogram block is up here in the air, and so we have four times G times H. No springs, so this is the last uh, example without any springs, zeros across the board, and then we have to ask about the work term. Is there work here? from an external force? The answer is no, but we want to make sure we recognize why that is. Tension does exist here. Tension is pulling away from the 10 kilogram block's motion, but it is pulling in the same direction as the four kilograms block motion. So the tension is internal. So tension is internal, and it has just as much pulling and adding energy to one object as it does pulling away and taking away energy um, from the other object. So there's no overall addition of energy from that internal force. So instead, we just go back to the same energy problem that we always have. Energy before plus work added equals energy after. And let me say once more, that although this is the only example where we have two blocks in a separate full video example, nothing about our process has changed except for the fact that we ask about both objects. There is no other trick to it. We just ask about both objects. So in the energy before situation, there's a whole bunch of zeros. I'm just going to have um, it show up once this time. I know that I normally use a placeholders, but that's a lot of zeros, plus 10 times G times H because it's the 10 kilogram block that is higher, 10 times 9.8. And if we look, the height here, 60 centimeters, should be 0 0.6 meters to be able to play nicely with the rest of our units, 0 0.6 meters. Our work added term we look and we said, no, there is no external force that is adding or taking energy out of the system. And then the energy after, we have one half 
times 10 times v squared plus 1 half times 4 times v squared plus 4 times 9.8. The height is still 0 0.6 over here that it's higher by. 0 0.6, and then several other zero terms. All right, so we have done all of the physics when we get to this step, and now it's just a little bit of math to get our final answer. But the most important thing I can make sure we saw is that both objects were moving at the end. They're tied together. They have to move in the same way. So we'll plug into our calculator. On the left, we get 58.8. Eight. And on the right, 1 half times 10 is 5v squared, plus 1 half times 4 is 2v squared, plus all that in our calculator is 23.5, 2, then we subtract 23.52 from both sides, and we get 35 Point two eight on the left, 5v squared plus 2v squared is 7v squared. And so to finish solving, we divide by 7. So 35.28 divided by 7 is equal to v squared. Then we'll take the square root of that. And we end up with a final speed of 2.24 meters per second. And that is the end of the problem here. So with this, um, with this problem, we'll notice that that is in fact the speed for both objects, even though we're only asked about one of them. So it is the answer to the speed of the 10 kilogram mass. It is also how fast the four kilogram block is moving upwards as well. So in this problem, like I said before, the key thing is just to ask about both objects in your table of um, yes and no questions. That's it. That's the only trick here. So we will see examples with two blocks tied together in problem sets. We will see them on tests. We want to be able to handle it. And the only trick is just to ask a couple of more yes or no questions. All right, coming up, we have a couple of examples that finally involve some springs. And we'll see how to ask and answer that yes or no question about the potential energy from a spring. We'll see you in those next examples.